Hi guys, I'm Laurie Vitale, and on this episode of Laurie in the Kitchen, we are making, we are revisiting an oldie but a goodie. We have not made banana cream pudding here in over, I think like a decade, and we are gonna be making the Magnolia's banana cream pudding, which I hear has wildly been popular all over the web, with the exception of, we are not using a box vanilla pudding mix, we are making a homemade vanilla pudding because A, it is infinite more delicious, and B, there's a lot of you that watch me from all over the world and I love you for it. And I know you are, cannot get your hands on some of those prepackaged things that we have here in the US and vanilla pudding is probably one of them. I know I can't find it in Italy. So I'm gonna show you how to make a homemade version. This is so delicious. You're going to absolutely love it. And to make a homemade vanilla pudding is so easy and you probably already have all the ingredients on hand. So let's get started. In a large saucepan, you're gonna go ahead and add some milk and you're gonna get this to get nice and hot. You don't wanna bring it to a boil. You wanna bring it to like a scalding light bubble. I'm gonna be using a handheld whisk here because you're gonna need the power because at first you're gonna feel like this isn't gonna work, but it works, trust me. To so a large bowl, all together. I know it sounds wild, but you're gonna to have to trust me. You're gonna go ahead and add granulated sugar, some cornstarch, egg yolks, really important. Sorry, something stuck on there is all good, don't worry. And some vanilla bean paste. I'm using vanilla bean paste because I really wanna drive home that vanilla flavor. And a pinch of salt to make everything bloom and everything kind of come to life. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk this and at first, and you can even hang with me if you want to as you see this, at first you're gonna be like, that's never gonna work. It's really thick. It's clumpy, it's never gonna become a thick, pourable mixture, but watch the magic. Because in about, I would say, two minutes, maybe a minute and a half, this is gonna become a thick, creamy, pale cloud of goodness. We are about a minute in, and look at how beautiful it's looking. You want that thick, pale in color mixture and I'm just gonna keep whisking it until the milk comes up to a simmer. Now, my milk is nice and hot to a simmer and you're gonna temper this because if I were to add all of this to my hot pot, what's gonna happen is because you're taking cold egg yolks and adding them to something really hot all at once, it could scramble those eggs. I have been there, I've done that. And let me tell you, it's never a good outcome for just about anybody. So you temper those egg yolks, and you add about a cup or so of the hot milk, and then we're gonna add all of this to the remaining pot with the milk. That's good enough. Set that aside. You should never have this on the highest speed, oh, on the highest speed, on the highest heat, because I don't wanna scorch anything. Add it in. Sorry, I know the bowl is not in your favor, but <laughs> I need my I need my right dominant hand to grab everything out. I'm gonna switch to a whisk, and I'm just like very gently, very, very gently going to whisk this, periodically switch to a spatula just so that I can grab any corner, and this is going to simmer all low. I don't want this to boil. I really just want this to be at a low, low simmer because if you boil, there is a high possibility you'll split the milk and you don't want that. So I am just going to do this until the mixture thickens. It'll take about hmm, five, six minutes. You see how nice and thick that is? That is absolutely perfect. And let me show you how you can always tell when your custard's ready. You take a spatula or a wooden spoon and if you run your finger down and it stays separate and it doesn't run together, it's done. I want it. It's sublime. Add that to a bowl. You might want to pass it through a sieve, but I'm pretty confident that it, it is good as is. Beautiful. Awesome. I like a lot of pudding in my banana cream pudding, so this may look like a ton, but it is just right. I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap. Crucial that the plastic wrap touches the custard itself so that it eliminates that really gross like film that it builds on top, you know, that it forms on top. And this has to cool completely. 
once it does that, we're pretty much going to put the banana pudding together. Custard has fully cooled. We are going to whip up some whipping cream until it develops really nice stiff peaks. Sweeten it up with some powdered sugar so that that way the cream has been sweetened. Don't know if you can hear me. Pudding has cooled completely. Now I will say I've made more pudding than I needed, but I like it very creamy and puddingy. So I go always a little bit extra. Um, and this also varies, you know, with the size of the dish that you're using. I'm using the small, I think this is a two quart baking dish. And then if there's any extra custard because it's too much, we will eat it with a spoon because it is that delicious. Now I know a big part of what makes this pudding so good is that a, this banana cream pudding is so good is that you mix the instant pudding with um, sweetened condensed milk, but this is a great version if you can't find those such things. So you do need vanilla wafers, although you can make the same thing with like shortbread, any kind of cookie like that. I don't perfectly layer, I do this. Because these are quite small. You just need like a layer of them. Then I take my bananas. I have one that's more ripe than the others. Don't ask. I try not to ask myself these kinds of questions sometimes. How's that possible? I don't know. I don't know, but it's gonna be great. And then I do about two bananas or so per layer. Just slice them thin, not too thin, but you know, and just scatter them all around. Then you do about half the custard, or again, if you're doing this in a different vessel, like a trifle or something like that, <clears throat> you may need to do more layers, or you may need less cream, or less custard, I should say, but this just ends up working out really well, and it's kind of like, to me, it's just easier, it's more rustic, it's like a, like a tiramisu, you know? And then another layer of your vanilla wafers and your bananas and kind of just set them really good in there, you know? Top with the custard. I know it's a really full, it's a full plate here, but it's perfect. Oh, just you wait. Now, you do need this to sit for about, I'd say, four or five hours. You really don't want to do this any longer than maybe seven or eight because the bananas will start to brown and they will start to kind of like leach out all their liquid and then it just becomes like a real brown, gross mess, if I'm being honest. So I don't want that. Um, I want just a really luscious, delicious, result and then what I will do is that I will clean this up. I'm gonna cover this and put it back into the fridge. I'm gonna put my plastic wrap right back on the top, put it back into the fridge and then I'm gonna save a banana to slice thinly, toss it with just a tiniest bit of lemon so it doesn't turn brown, put it on top. It's so good. It's been about I would say four and a half hours. It's good enough for me. Now remember don't take it too far or those bananas will turn brown. Oh yeah. Now, I am going to serve this with some bananas on top and some more of vanilla wafers, but you see how the wafer and the banana kind of, the, the wafers soften. I don't know if you can see, but see back here? The wafer, the cookie just sort of softens. That's what happens. It's delicious. It's delicious. One of the very first things I made for Joe was banana cream pudding. Mmm. Mmm, honestly, beyond. So delicious, so luscious. The cream, the banana, the wafer, it's a 10 out of 10. Laura in the kitchen.com for the written recipe. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Please make this. It is so delicious. You will not regret it and you will not have any leftovers if you make this for a gathering. It's that good. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.